when we need it. Here we go. This is when we need our elevator music. Ah, there's mm -hmm. Madeline. <laughs> I never got an email that we were starting at 3 30. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> no, not to worry. We're, all here. Here. we're here. I didn't I didn't get an email. I didn't get any emails. Hmm. You've been started since 3 30. It was yesterday. Oh, well. <laughs> me. No, no, no just 3 30. A pre-meeting. Oh, I had no idea. <laughs> no knowledge whatsoever. It's okay. Hmm. Well, we're here now. Sorry about that. Okay. Great. Well, it's <laughs> nice to it's nice to see everyone filing in. I love this. Yeah. Populating. <laughs> <laughs> Have we got an order? Is that what you were discussing? Yes, I'm gonna. Um, I'm going to send you this. Thank you. I'm gonna send you. Well, yeah, I'm just gonna call everybody. It'll be really straightforward. Mm. I'll put it in the chat so everyone can see our order. There we go. Okay. How's that? Got it. Great. I apologize. Uh, two names were there. There were a few names left off the list, which is weird because I did it twice. So <laughs> sorry that you didn't get the email, but we have an order. Um, welcome everybody who is filing in. Um, we have about 70 people coming. So we're, we're waiting um, to welcome to the annual business meeting and board installation. I, I'm so used to saying lunch, but it is Zoom. Um, we're <laughs> glad you're here to get an update on what's been happening at the eBell. Um, so we're gonna wait a few more minutes to let everyone in. Just a few reminders to stay on mute. And we are recording this program. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna put it up on the, on the website, but we might. Um, and then also for questions, please put them in the chat. We're going to let all the board members do their reports first and any questions that come in, we'll address after everyone has spoken. So um, we will get that done and uh, stay tuned. And I'm glad you're here. Me too. Give everybody a few more minutes here. Ah, we've reached our magic number, Janice. <laughs> we need at least 50 of you. <laughs> and you're all here, so thank you. <laughs> ah, 51, we have a margin of error, yay. <laughs> Great, well, we'll give everybody a minute or two more. Um, hmm. Hmm. I think we can get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome. We have a few coming in, but it's five minutes past. So just a few reminders. If you can remain on mute during the program, it helps with any background noise. Um, we are recording this program for the website. Um, and also any questions during any reports, if you can put them into the chat, we will answer them after all the reports are given. So I am going to now pass it over to Patty. Lombard, please take it away. Great, thank you, Meredith. Thank you for keeping us organized. It's hard for me to believe that it's been a year since we did this last time, but um, my name is Patty Lombard and it's been my honor to serve as the president. I've got one more year to go, so I'm not leaving you yet. <laughs> uh, 
Um, today, it's uh, we're still virtual, which we were last time. Um, but wow, what a difference um, it makes 365 days later and all of the events of the world have changed. So we are still in great shape, which is really good to hear. And um, I'm in the library virtually, but I'm really excited that we're going to eventually get back into the building. And we thought we'd sort of go through the reports and I just right off the top can tell you that our plan is to, um, the first big event that we want you to put on your calendar is August 8th for our traditional barbecue. And we're super excited that we're gonna be able to be in the building for that. Actually, we'll be in the courtyard, um, Meredith and the staff uh, in the banquet department, Dwayne and our wonderful chef are already working on all the details for that. So look for that invitation. It's gonna be for members and your guests only. And we look forward to having everyone celebrate. That'll also be um, a wonderful day. We're gonna make uh, an exciting announcement in mid-July, but we want you to be sure to reserve to come to the barbecue so you can meet our new executive director who will be there. And we are also going to celebrate Philip's retirement, which for many, many, some of you may be aware has been a long time in, in the works. And Philip will be helping us with this transition and we're going to have a cocktail party and an appropriate Philip Miller celebration because as some of you may know, Philip will be will have been with us 16 years uh, when he leaves us this summer and he's done a wonderful job and we're thrilled to be able to have this fabulous transition. It's a really exciting time for us. Um, and so on that note, I thought I would tell you a little bit more about what's been happening through the board members who will be who are on us, with us today. Most importantly, that we're in good financial shape thanks to the stewardship of the staff and the board. And I thought we'd just start off with Madeline and then write your questions in the chat and we'll be sure to make sure we get to everybody. So Madeline, are you ready to give us the finance report? Sure. Um, so I gave a similar report at our last monthly meeting and it's like this. Okay, so we're actually covering a fiscal year. The eBay's finances are improving. We had fewer event cancellations and the forward calendar of special events are ramping up. We currently have over 2 million in advanced deposits and security deposits for catering and the theater, which are safely on deposit at Merrill Lynch. We have restored the current staff to their prior pay levels starting July 1 and are closely watching cash flow and profits at the margin for each event. Philip has informed me that he has not noticed any shortages or substantially higher prices for food and alcohol for the two weddings we recently hosted at the end of May. As of June 15th, the state of California reduced COVID restrictions in light of the favorable medical statistics in our state and in our county, helped by vaccinations, precautions, and increasing herd immunities. The Finance Committee met and updated the eBell Finance Policies and Procedures Overview. Each board member will receive a revised copy for her binder, and the latest version will be in the new board members' binders. Okay, so I have an attachment, which I hope somebody can post for me. Um, mm -hmm. Madeline, is it the one that you sh sent me? Yeah, that says financial dashboard. Uh, I one pager I... spreadsheet. Yep, right there. Yeah, can you shrink it to fit? Um, I can well, expand it. You can expand it. So that is just that page without. This is how it was sent. Um, hmm. It would take me a second. To, uh, if, here we go. I hate to have to. This is what I. This is what well, I have lower, for you right now. <laughs> lower right hand. Lower right hand corner has a zoom. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Can we do it? Oh, it's a spreadsheet. I was thinking it was PowerPoint. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it wasn't 
Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. So it's not going to help even if. No, this is. But we'll, we can post this. And Madeline, if you want to just share well, with us the highlights. Maybe you can spread it a little wider and then we'll just scroll down. Starting at the top. Wider. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's got to be a happy medium here. No, so that I can get the far right column. Okay, oh, now it's too small. Go about to like where it says J. Can you see across the top? J. Uh, sure. Yeah, stretch, stretch it out about like that. Maybe. Well, it it. There you go. I'll, I'll I'll go with that. I'll accept that. Okay. All right. So, um, hmm. All right. These are unaudited numbers. I just want everybody to know that. And since we're calling this our semi-annual business meeting, but I have covered 11 months, I just want you to know that as well. Um, I don't have June numbers yet. So I just have the 11 months of numbers through May that are reflected here, starting with July 1 of 2020, okay? And going through the end of May of this year. So club and contributed revenue, including donations was 240,000 and $194. Now we had budgeted that it would be 216,000. So we actually came in about 24,000 over budget. Now, last year it was a huge number, 421,000. And that's because we had things like luncheons and club events in that top line revenue. So this reflects the switch to virtual programming versus on-site club events. Okay, now next line down, is special events, which is catering. And as we know, the eBell closed its doors on March 13th of 2020 due to COVID. So the revenue went down substantially from the year prior. Now it was more than we budgeted. So we got a little bit more. Um, and that's why we were biting our nails. Okay, <laughs> filming and parking. Yes, they came through. They did $964,697 in revenue, which we budgeted $915,000. So we were over budget there. And uh, the year before, we'd only done $212,000. So we really, really pivoted to filming. Okay, now the theater had to unfortunately go dark. So we did have some revenue because some filming events did take place in the theater. So that was 163,000. We had only budgeted 23,000. And it was versus 692,000 from the previous year. When you recall, we were doing a lot of things in the theater. So in a sense, you know, because 2020 was such a very good year for the theater, uh, we think it will come back because there's nothing wrong with our theater. It's a wonderful theater. Um, so this is what I call the operating revenue. So it decreased by more than half. Um, 2021 revenue was though better than we budgeted. And to stop the gap, we got government loans. Government loans were a source of funds in 2020 and 2021. We applied for and received both the PPP1 and the PPP2, as well as an emergency disaster loan. So that's what helped stop the gap. Then you will see something smaller called administrative income. This is the income on our treasury portfolio. I don't count it as operating revenue. I'm sure on the 990s they probably do, but I, I like to see what the club actually did irrespective of what the earnings were on our portfolio and irrespective of these loans. So now let's scroll down to the cost items. All right, under payroll and payroll expense, you will see that it is the single largest factor of our expenses. So we had to cut staff a lot. We paid a million dollars to staff if, with benefits. In the prior year, we had paid 2,226,000. So eBell, just prior to when we had to close our doors had ramped up operations prior to the pandemic. We didn't know we were gonna have a pandemic. Nobody on our staff caused the pandemic to happen. It just happened. Then we had non-payroll expenses because we still have to maintain the building, but we deferred 
a lot of things that we would have normally done. And some things, you know, just because people were working from home, we didn't have costs for. So that was a tricky one to try to estimate. But our non payroll expenses were 727,000 versus a million eight from the year before. So the pandemic forced immediate reduction of expenses. We were quickly classifying what was the essential versus non essential. And we didn't care if their feelings got hurt because we didn't cause this to happen. So anyway, we, we also have something called miscellaneous cost of goods sold. I've never really like drilled into what that is. I always see that and it, it's there. So I wanted to take that into consideration. I think it has something to do with um, food and items that, that we use, but just wanted to reflect it real, realistically. So our total operating expenses went down a lot. And they had to because our revenue went down a lot. So you will ask the question, well, wait a minute, how did we wind up with a profit? <laughs> um, our PP1 was forgiven. And according to the government, you can add it to non-contributing income when it's forgiven. So our PP1 forgiveness turned our operating loss into a gain. So you will ask, well, what, what about in the prior year? Why, why did we lose money in the prior year and there wasn't a pandemic? And that's because that prior 11 months where we had ramped up and then suddenly had to force the shutdown did include months of zero income with much higher wages. And we didn't know how long the pandemic was gonna last. So for the first two months, we really didn't cut anybody. And then when we saw, uh-oh, we're in this thing and it's gonna be pretty severe then was when we start to have to start making cuts. So last year we went from planning, you know, for the worst, hoping for the best. And we actually came out as far as I'm concerned, pretty darn good. So as we look forward with these extra um, levels of business that are coming in now, we will start ramping up again and we're still very, very cost conscious, cost conscious about what is considered essential versus what is non essential. So that for you is the end of my report for the semi annual business meeting. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. So I'm going to ask everybody to hold their questions so we can go through it all. Um, I we, just clarify though that we did make immediate um, staff reductions upon, you know, the extra staff that are there for events and things like that. Um, so we just, we didn't, we didn't go way, we went as far down as we could. And then we did further reductions as Madeline said. So, um, but I think you can see why we're so thankful to have Madeline keeping an eye on our finances. So, well, and, 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 Lindsay and everybody, all the staff was very, very helpful. Right. But Madeline's done a great job. And so has Donna in helping make sure that we're, that we all understand this, because this is one of the things that's really important. And as our members, we want to make sure you understand it as well. I think what I'm going to do is ask Lorraine if she's willing to go out of order a little bit, because Lorraine is a nice um, uh, follow on to Madeline, because one of the things that we did really successfully this year was our philanthropic efforts for the eBell. So Lorraine, would you mind going next? OK, thank you. Um, eBell Friends has a new and exciting presence on the eBell website. Please check it out. Julia and Fran Varga developed the pages so our potential grant makers will see how eBell Friends is raising money for the eBell. The eBell Friends presence on the website will be expanding with more information as we see fit. Thank you to the California Relief Foundation. The eBell was granted $25,000 as COVID relief for a small business. Kay Ballou and Patty spent many hours on procuring this grant. The emergency fund raised $100,000 for the, um, I wanna thank everybody, the members and the board for participating. It's uh, a once in a lifetime for us. Uh, Ginger wrote a wonderful letter and in the year proceeding, which was March of last year through about 
June of this year, the emergency fund, like I said, raised $100,000. A new fundraising campaign has begun with an e-blast and a feature in the e-magazine. We're raising money for a long overdue endowment for the building. We will roll this out in early fall much more aggressively. And Ebo Friends has been brainstorming ideas and we're looking forward to the support from the new executive director. Um, we know that she has a lot of ideas and contacts and we wanna mine her for that. Um, and we wanna ask her questions and see how we can roll this out in a big way to the community and just get everybody involved. Um, I'd also like to introduce potential major donors to the executive director as part of the 21-22 campaign. Now we're moving ahead with the plan to install the railings in the garden. That's something we've talked about for a long time and will make the garden much more safe for members and for events. So I'm looking forward to working with Christy on that in particular and in general on the master plan. Now Amazon Smile is something I don't want anybody to forget about because we um, are connected with it now and it's a wonderful thing. It's a very, very small percentage, but it adds up so if anybody has questions about it, please let me know and we'll talk you through it. And in early August, we're going to be re-rolling that out. So that's pretty much my report. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Thank you, Lorraine. Um, so hold your thoughts for Lorraine. And um, she has done a transformational job for us on eBell Friends and we're all very lucky. Um, that she's done this groundwork for us. And, and you can see it, it's really paid off thanks to all of you as well. Um, so now I'd like to ask Phyllis to talk about the programs which has have sustained us throughout this past year and a wonderful job that she's done on um, Zoom. And Phyllis. <laughs> Hello everyone. During this club year, a year like never before, Programs embody the eBell motto to a T. We will find a way or make one. We found our switch to Zoom protocol offered as many opportunities as challenges. And in the end, we will have offered 95 Zoom programs and one field trip from last July through this June, our fiscal year. This is close to a 100% increase over the in-house events of the past. In addition, programs arranged for free participation in an eBell parking lot drive-in documentary feature film screening initiated the Valentine Card Outreach Project teaming with Aretha's membership group, supported our Freedom Writer speaker with a used computer drive, participated in the LA a Subject sponsored Archives Bazaar with her newly digitized vintage club film footage, and our brand new news as of yesterday, we as a board have accepted a proposal by our fall speaker, Brian Coleman, who if you remember spoke to us about his historic wallpaper book to be a featured chapter in this upcoming coffee table sized book about women's clubs across America and the role they have played in the women's movement over the decades. All of this of course has taken a village my gratitude goes to all the members out of you who have come forward with wonderful program opportunities during the year and to the many faithful committee members who have seen it through. In particular, Amy Sinclair, who has taken our Foodie Fridays to heart and made them a real thing. And to Helene Seifer, who has helped create many of the virtual field trips. And especially to Catherine Hicks, who spearheaded this very exciting and popular member spotlights throughout the year. This ongoing program in particular has helped us stay connected more than any other. And we've gotten to know each other better than perhaps pre-pandemic. She has also initiated many of our original programming um, events. And with the help of our new committee member, Tara Warren, developed our hit cocktail hour Jeopardy game nights where we can just have some old fashioned fun. I want to give a special shout out to Madeline Murray too for assistance with a rich Black History Month programming schedule and helping us along with Catherine with our inclusivity goals. Lastly, a hats off to Meredith for her expertise and follow through, making all of our programs as professional as humanly possible. We hope you have enjoyed our efforts to keep you entertained, informed, 
calmed and soothed and especially connected. We also hope you enjoyed the virtual national and international experiences this format offered and we took advantage of. Most of all, we hope you learned a thing or two and enjoyed some personal growth. Our future looks promising for programs as we get back in the clubhouse this fall and for a summer barbecue. We look forward to a hybrid type of programming to incorporate some of the wonderful features virtual connections have provided this year. It's a new world out there and we will find new ways or make some. Thank you. Thank you, Phyllis. Really appreciate it. It's been an amazing year. 95. Oh my gosh, have we all been that busy? <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. Well, now I'd like to um, ask Randy Jones if she'd give us an update on the RCA. I guess it's like a little preview because you're going to have your annual meeting very soon next week. Oh, Randy, you're on mute. Yes, yep. there I am. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to be here once again, representing the Rest Cottage Association, the eBell's oldest philanthropy. This will be my last eBell business meeting as director of RCA. So I have to say, I'm especially disappointed to be speaking to you via Zoom yet again, instead of being able to hug every one of you. But I know that the opportunity for that is coming soon. The Rest Cottage Association, was founded in 1918 during the time of the great Spanish flu pandemic to support the Ebel Rest Cottage, literally a small house in which women without other accommodations could rest and rehabilitate themselves after illness or surgery. Today, as then, and as always, the need for assistance for Los Angeles County women in physical, emotional, and financial distress is real and urgent. For that reason, the RCA, now a foundation making grants to fund organizations helping women in need and their children throughout Los Angeles County, broadened its grantee base this year to include 15 organizations that received a total of $160,000, the most we've given away since 2014 and our second highest total in the last decade. The list of organizations that received funding from RCA last December, as you've heard, as you've heard me list before, and um, as shown on the card that you see now, is as follows. Alexandria House, $12,000. Critical Mass Dance Company, $5,000. Families and Criminal Justice, $12,000. Good Shepherd Center for Homeless Women and Children, $12,000. Genesee Center, Inc., $5,000. Jewish Family Services of LA's Hope Transitional, $5,000. Journey Out, $12,000. LA Family Housing Corporation, $12,000. New Directions for Veterans Oasis Program, $12,000. Safe Passages, also known as Women Crowned in Glory, $12,000. St. Barnabas Senior Services Women's Emergency Fund, $13,000. The Teen Project, $12,000. Treasures Ministries, $12,000. Union Rescue Missions Hope Gardens Family Center, $12,000. And We Spark Cancer Support Center, $12,000. That's a lot. As I reported in January, the 15 organizations selected out of a total of 23 applicants include three new grantees. At least four of them offer support to victims of domestic violence. And an additional three provide housing to homeless women and their children. In this way, RCA continues its long tradition of providing relief, compassion, and action in furtherance of its mission. As of the opening of business today, the value of our financial portfolio was $3,779,731, an increase of $90,884 over the balance at the time of our last business meeting on January 13th. 
Assuming the markets continue to do reasonably well, there's a good chance that we'll be able to maintain our current level of giving in 2022. The Social Services Committee, which operates as an adjunct to the RCA, providing hands-on assistance to our grantees, has continued its great work this year under the direction of Arden Teplow. Committee members serve as ambassadors to each organization, helping to determine their needs and matching them with eBell volunteers and projects. This year, of course, actual hands-on volunteer work was mostly impossible, but Arden and the committee rose to the occasion by raising money, a pretty amazing total of $8,486 from our very generous eBell members for emergency supplies and transportation for our grantees clients. I know we have a number of you here today to thank for that. The annual meeting of the RCA will take place next Monday, June 28th at 2 p.m. as Patty mentioned. This meeting is for all RCA members whether or not you've attended meetings in the past and for any eBell member who's interested in what we do. We'll introduce our wonderful new director, Stephanie Kaiser, who I am very excited about, and choose additional officers and directors as required by our bylaws. We'll take a break when club programming shuts down in July, but when the eBell's new season begins in August, regular meetings will convene as usual on the second Monday of each month at 1 p.m. And we'll have the opportunity to review and discuss the new grant applications that will have come in prior to our July 31st deadline. And finally, speaking of coming together and reviewing applications, all it takes to join RCA is payment of annual dues in the amount of $12. To be an active member involved in deciding which applicants will receive a grant, you need only show up for our orientation and training meeting at the beginning of next season. This makes it the easiest and by far the cheapest way there is to become a big time philanthropist. Please join us this year if you haven't already. Thank you. Patty, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry. Let's see, there we go. Um, thanks so much. It's amazing all of the work that's been done. And honestly, we couldn't, um, we couldn't have had a more challenging year for all of our charities. So it's nice. And I know that it was deeply appreciated. So uh, speaking of deep appreciation, I'd like to go next to Judith for all the work they've done in scholarship this year. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, our first president, Mrs. Matthew W. Roberts, said education means not only elevation of the mind, but expansion of the soul. Um, that was in 1919. Uh, in the 2021 cycle, our 101st year of providing scholarships to deser deserving students in Los Angeles attending institutions of higher learning in Los Angeles County, Currently, we award $5,000 per year for up to three years for attendance at a four-year institution and $3,000 per year for attendance at a two-year institution. As of today, our combined portfolio equals $6,628,262. There were 32 students who graduated this year, including last December and this May and June. We estimate being able to take between 35 and 40 new students for this cycle. We have not, we will not have a final number until our meeting next week. The current class of eBell scholars has 65 students, 25, um, I just read that, excuse me. <laughs> the criteria for applying for our scholarship program is 3.25 GPA, full-time attendance, attending an institution of higher learning in Los Angeles County, either accredited public, private, or two-year, being a resident of Los Angeles County, having at least freshman status at the time of application, and um, are, 
Scholarship is renewable for up to three years or graduation, whichever happens first. We are nearing the end of the process to select the new scholars who will be joining the continuing students for the class of 21-22. The final decision will be made Monday, June 28th at our June scholarship committee meeting. Once again, this year, everyone, everything was done on Zoom. I am very grateful to the eBell staff and committee members for their hard work and support. We are proud to announce, starting with our next cycle, which begins on January 1st, 2022, when the new application opens, we will be extending our outreach to all legal green card holders. Up to this point, only US citizens were eligible to apply. In our ever-changing world, it is the right time and the right thing to do. Our scholarship program is administered by the Scholarship Committee, which is a hardworking and dedicated group of women. There are currently 21 members, some of whom are new this year. We extend an invitation to all of you to consider joining the Scholarship Committee. We meet on the third Monday of every month. Besides our monthly meetings, we also have subcommittees that focus on aspects of our program, such as compliance, finance, outreach, PR, and events. We hosted a major outreach event this year on Zoom to outreach to the honors program directors at two-year schools, and I am proud to say that we have tripled the number of applicants from these schools. Uh, we have been low in the two-year schools for a while, and this was a concerted effort to, be, to bring more of those students to the scholarship program. I want to thank the board and again, thank the eBell staff who have supported our program over the year. Without your support and help, we could have not have managed to be as successful as we were. Finally, it has been a privilege and an honor to serve as your scholarship director over these past four years. And I look forward to continuing with scholarship committee and doing everything I can to support our new director, Ann Lynch, who will also do a great job. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Judith. In very important work there. Um, okay, so now for the fun stuff, which is what we love about our building and all the wonderful contents inside. Um, Suzanne, can you give us a report on historic collections? Okay, so. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we I don't have much new news for this year because our work all takes place in the building and the building was closed. However, we do look forward to the building opening again soon and being able to continue our work under our new director, Denise Parga. This year, we did accept a donation of a player piano from our deceased member, Richard, uh, Mark Richards' estate. So we look forward to enhancing some of our events with some of his lively music. We also look forward to using the asset management system that we acquired along with the new computer system a while back. In the, and we'll be able to tag each piece of furniture and create floor plans for each room so the eBell will always look beautiful. The pieces get moved quite a bit to accommodate our numerous film shoots, but we are not complaining because of the incredible income this provides to our club. Over the past four years, the committee has cleaned and repaired most of the collection, including our Persian carpets and fine art paintings. We were in the process of cleaning and repairing some of our beautiful statues and sculptures, but had to stop due to COVID. We have also spent years preserving, repairing, and cleaning our extensive costume and vintage clothing collection. We have now created proper storage areas to preserve our pieces for the future generations. The costume committee does an incredible job year after year and should be praised for their dedication and hard work. Also, the archives under the direction of Kay Lachter, containing the history of our eBell club going back over a hundred years is our most important collection. We were in the process of scanning all of our documents when the pandemic hit. Unfortunately, we were not able to continue until the building reopens. This should be our top priority as soon as possible because we do not want to lose our history. And we welcome all volunteers to the committee. 
An interesting and important part of our history is the number of movies that have been filmed over the years in our beautiful clubhouse. We are hoping to create a book of this history for our members and others once we have access to this information again. It has been a pleasure serving as the first director of historic collections and I look forward to seeing you all in person soon. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Suzanne, for being such a good steward <laughs> of our historic collections. I got to be in the building today um, and I walked around and there's really a wonderful array of beautiful things. And so the more that we learn about it, the more we appreciate it. So thank you so much for all of your hard work there. So next I'd like to introduce Rita, who is a new bride as of earlier this week. Congratulations, Aretha. <laughs> In her spare time, she managed to get married, as well as doing an amazingly wonderful job for us on the membership. So she and Meredith are a fabulous team, and we're delighted to have them. So Aretha, if you could give us an update on membership. Thank you, Patty. Good afternoon, everyone. Members are the heartbeat of the club. And without the heart beating, we wouldn't be able to survive or to live. Our total membership for the 2020-2021 period was 430. This represents a 72% retention from the previous renewal period, which we're very excited about because <clears throat> during the pandemic, we were expecting or projecting maybe 50%. So we give gratitude and thank you members for renewing and st staying with us. So, with that in mind, on June 2nd, we sent out the membership renewal notice for the 2021-2022 renewal period. Two different sets of letters were sent out. The first is to our current members, and the second set were to the members that did not renew their memberships this past year. Those in the second set that renew this year will have a gap in their coverage um, uh, in their membership. So far as, as of today, we have approximately 55% of our members that have renewed. So we thank you for that. Uh, if you have any friends that are not on this call, please encourage them to renew. Our goal is to have 75% of our, re, our members renewed by July 1st, and hopefully 100% by the end of July, because you wanna definitely have your membership paid in order to be able to attend the barbecue and have your guest with you. So make sure that that is something that you put on your radar. Once again this year, members are able to pay two years in advance for their regular membership. Uh, we're asking also that each member go online to our online directory and update their profiles. So make sure that everything is there, it's updated. If you do not have a photo, we would love to see your picture attached to that. Once the renewal process is completed, we will be cleaning up that online directory to only reflect current members. Also want to let members know that lifetime membership is available for regular members with at least 10 years of good standing with the club. One other thing that we're gonna be doing this year with membership is in July next month, we will be sending out membership opportunities to the general public utilizing our email list from this past year's online programs and events. So with having 95 different programs, you know that we have a lot of people that we can reach out to. And this is also another good opportunity that if you have any friends or families that would like to join, July is the time for them to join as well. Looking back just a few months ago, at the start of the year in February, we collaborated with programs uh, and sent out the Galantine postcards to our membership. In March, membership, we hosted a welcome program for our new members via Zoom, which included not only the new members, but our board members and representation from our different committees. The new member class of the 2020-2021 is a remarkable group of ladies because they chose to join the club during a time when the club was closed and not knowing when they would be able to experience the club as we have in the past. Membership is also pleased to collaborate with the scholarship committee 
Membership will give each scholar special membership during their time in the program. They will have an eBell member to mentor them. And the purpose for this is so to provide inclusion and exposure to our wonderful club. The scholars and or mentor will be responsible to pay for any fee-based programs and events. The scholarship committee will be providing more information regarding mentorship sometime in August or September once they get through their application process. Please be on a lookout for an e-blast or an announcement in the e-magazine on how you can become a mentor. We, the membership committee, will continue with our commitment to reach out to our members. And if you are looking on how to become more involved in the club, but you don't know where to begin or how to begin, please reach out to myself or Madeline, excuse me, Meredith, Madeline too, probably. Um, and we're here to help you um, to become more involved in the club in any level that you're ready to do. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much. Okay. I am unmuted now. All right. Officially. <laughs> Thanks so much, Aretha. Great work in membership. It's really the lifeblood of the club. We really, really appreciate it. And it's nice to see so many of you here on the Zoom with us. Um, so Lizzie Blatt, who's done a wonderful job for us pivoting away from our printed publication and to our e-magazine is our next report. Lizzie. Thank you, Paddy. Um, hi, everybody. Um, in October 2020, in response to the pandemic, we published the first issue of the online e-bell e-magazine. This was actually initiated not by me, but by Paddy Lombard. <laughs> whose idea it was and made into reality, not by me, but by Julia Soto, who cleans up all my mess um, on a monthly basis and is incredibly patient and I love her dearly. So far, the move to an e-magazine appears to be a successful one. We're saving in the region of $65,000 per year in printing and mailing costs. And our readership numbers appear to be pretty healthy and rising. Um, just a few um, figures for you, and I'm sorry, but I don't have a, I don't have a spreadsheet or anything like that because I don't know how to do those. Um, so bear with me. Um, we currently mail the e-magazine to 25 recipients, and we monitor readership levels by the number of subscribers who open and those who click, i.e. go from one page to the next. On average, it's ideal to get open rates around 15 to 25%. And our open rates range from 16 to 22.7%. So we're right bang on target. The ideal percentage of clicks is around two to 3%, which doesn't sound like an awful lot, but apparently that's the way it goes. We're getting an average click rate that started at 4.7% in October and has risen steadily to 5.5% in May and June. So our numbers are healthy and rising. Um, if you haven't been reading your monthly e-magazine, you won't be aware of what's going on behind the scenes. We cover stories about our members and their achievements. We introduce new members. We look at what the staff and events teams are doing. Anything that's important to know, we aim to cover. So if you or a member that you know of has had a new book published or a piece of art exhibited in public, has received some kind of accolade, please let us know. We want to celebrate it. Um, this, you know, we're an amazing club full of amazing women and we want to celebrate each other. Um, I have to make an apology to my publications committee for not involving them in the production of the magazine as much as I would have liked. Because the access of the WordPress site that we use to produce it is restricted, I've not been able to circulate material to the committee for proofreading prior to publication, as I used to do when we were printing the magazine. However, if anyone wants to volunteer as a deputy editor, um, please let me know and I can give them access and train them how to use the site. If you do want to be involved in a publications report, sorry, if you do want to be involved in a publications project, I have one for you. We're about to start work on putting all our previous articles about the history and collections of the e-bells 
on the website and we want to go back to 2015. Um, I need help on this because I need ideas. The actual nuts and bolts can, have been done already by the staff, but we need to tidy it up and have some ideas on how to present this on a website. So if you want to help with that, I'd really be grateful because I'm kind of stuck. So please get in touch. Um, and that's my report. Thank you, Lizzie. She is very humble. She's done a great job and we really didn't have a lot of choice because we were looking at cost savings and I said, oh, it's really easy. You'll find it. No problem. <laughs> Famous last words. And she just jumped in and did a great job, but she's fundamentally a great writer and a great storyteller. And that's what really counts, whether it's a printed page or something that you see digitally, it's really, it, it matters what the words say. And you can tell Lizzie's done a great job for us. So congratulations to her. And we are welcoming other people to get involved in this um, process. So I hope we'll find other bylines in the e-magazine soon. So um, let's see, Caroline Mosier would have been our last report on the house. Um, and Caroline is not with us today. She's been working very hard and caregiving with her mom. And so we, I personally can totally relate to that. So I've given her a complete pass, but we're super excited that we have Christy McAvoy who's on this and will be inducted onto the board and she's going to be Caroline, carry on in Caroline's stead. So it'll be, we will be in super good hands um, for house. So that leads me to my, the part where I get to thank everybody. Um, I just want to thank some of the outgoing board members and maybe you can embarrass them Meredith by like popping them in and we'll all be a, a group. <laughs> But first, I want to thank Carlene, who served as our secretary. And, you know, anyone who's ever served as a secretary in an organization knows that it is the job where all the work gets done. And Carlene has been so helpful and the best ever, really. She's kept us in order and she's always reminding me, we have a meeting. Here's the agenda. Here's what you need to do. <laughs> so if you're getting timely reports, it's because of Carlene. So I just want to thank her. And um, she's doing a great job transitioning. Um, to Elizabeth, so she'll, she'll be in good shape as well. She's figured out a way to streamline our minutes so it's not writing a four hour novel every time we do it. <laughs> so thank you, Carlene. Uh, I wanna thank Suzanne who was absolutely adamant about this piano and really kind of helped me, you know, get something really a wonderful treasure from a gentleman member who wanted us desperately to have it. It was, it was not easy and it is piano number like seven. So it's not like we needed it, but we couldn't, it, it's the sort of thing we couldn't really say no. And Suzanne was very helpful. Helpful. She also gave us these fab, got us these fabulous slipper chairs, which are in my office in the president's office. And I invite all of you up to come and look at them. They're just this like super cool blue color. And Suzanne and her husband actually went to pick them up and bring them to the Ebel. So I want to thank Suzanne for keeping the Ebel at the center of her heart. Um, I want to thank Carolyn Mosher, who's not here, for being an incredible steward of our building. And she has done so much for us, more behind the scenes than any of, of us will ever know. And she's also done the amazing great favor of finding an incredible successor. So we're looking forward to working with Christy. Um, I want to thank Rebecca, who's also not able to join us today. Rebecca has been like our social conscience and always sort of tapping me on the shoulder and saying, let's not make it performative let's make it authentic and meaningful and she's always sort of pushing us forward so i want to thank um rebecca for that randy jones is a super good egg you could tell randy's done this for four years she was my um successor on rest cottage and did a fabulous job way better than i did so it's my pleasure to have served with Randy again on the board. She was also very helpful as was Carlene on our search committee and want to thank them both for that. Um, and then last but not least is Judith who's leaving us and Judith has done a wonderful job of sh shepherding scholarship and teaching me about the importance of making sure that all of our scholars are 
um, treated with compassion and equity and fairness and really going the extra mile to reach out um, to schools and to make sure that the eBell is well known to these students. And we have the opportunity to change their lives. And um, Judith has been instrumental in doing that. So thank you to Judith. So a round of applause for all of our outgoing board members. <laughs> Silent applause. <laughs> Only you can hear me applauding. <laughs> Great. So now it's our, my pleasure to welcome and install our new board members. So Meredith, do you want to, shall we bring in everyone as I introduce them? I'm super excited to introduce Lisa Amin, who will be our uh, Director of Public Relations, uh, replacing Rebecca, and um, Christy, who we mentioned, who's doing theater, house theater and grounds, and Denise, Parga, who will be taking over for Historic Collections. Uh, Ann Lynch will be handling scholarship. And um, Elizabeth Yo is, uh, is Elizabeth with us? I know she wasn't on yes. earlier. Yes. Oh, great. There you are. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Um, should we also, oh, Stephanie. Stephanie Kaiser is also with us. I went right over Rest Cottage, my apologies. So I'm really excited to welcome these new board members. I think you're coming in at a great time. It's way better than last year. <laughs> so um, I guess what I should do, Meredith, all I need to do is just ask everyone to answer in the affirmative to my swearing in and then we'll, you'll, it'll be effective, right? Okay. That is correct. Okay, so here we go. Do you swear to perform? I guess I have to ask you to put up your right hand or something, right? Uh, do you swear to perform the duties of your board position as described in the eBell bylaws and policies and to uphold the bylaws and policies of the eBell of Los Angeles? I do. I do. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Yay! That's so, so great. All right, well, you're gonna hear a lot from these ladies soon. Um, and now I guess we need to swear in our new nominating committee. Okay, so we have Nancy Castillo, Dia Schuldenfrei, Fozzie Yukob, Denise, Ol I'm not gonna say that right. Denise, you'll have to correct it for me. Olga? And I, I'm gonna interrupt you, Patty. Whoever, um, the committee, if you can put on your cameras, I can't spotlight you unless your camera is on. Please, <laughs> thank you. All right. We do it again. We'll start with Nancy, Dia, uh, Fozzy, Denise, and Helene. If you guys are here, there we go. I see Dia. All right. Great, Nancy. Okay, Helene, hello. Let's see, do we have Denise? Meredith is scurrying around all the pages. We, we don't have Denise or uh, Fozzie. Okay. I saw them, but. All right, well, <laughs> if they're here, we'll, we'll swear them in anyway. Okay, so you guys raise your right hand. It's Dia's day for being sworn in. She was sworn in on the board of the Rotary today too. <laughs> Oh no, you got an award at the Rotary. Never mind. Let's see. Do you swear to perform the duties of your board position of the nominating committee as described in the eBell bylaws and the policies and to uphold the bylaws and policies of the eBell of Los Angeles? I do. Great. Thank you so much for being willing to serve. We really appreciate it. The nominating committee is very important. It's a forward looking group that helps us figure out our future. All right, so now I think we can go to um, Q&A if anyone has any questions. Um, there was one question in the chat that came up asking about staff okay. um, that you answered. If you wanna just answer it to the, to the group. Yes. Um, I will has, the question was, have staff been rehired? So yes, we have rehired some staff. We have not rehired everyone. Um, <coughs> uh, we have restored payroll 
Um, for the people that were on the staff, which was a small core of about 10, many Meredith and, and her colleagues were working with for us at about 70% of their salary for quite some time. So that's step one to restore those people who've been with us. And then step two is to add staff as needed, but we're being super cautious. Madeline is, uh, you know, holding us back <laughs> to be prudent. We want to make sure, um, but rest assured, we are doing events with the um, weddings and things like that. And so those things are being staffed by temporary staff as needed. Um, but we do have our banquet manager back and we do have our chef uh, back. And we added some additional hours for the staff in special events, as well as um, on the club side, helping Meredith and Julia. But we are looking forward to adding some more people and following the proper procedures to extend that offer to people who had been laid off first. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, another question here. Um, about the financials? Yes, the, fin the financials reflected that PP1 loan has been forgiven. Uh, do we have any expectations that PP2 will also be forgiven? We're, we do. We're gonna follow but, the same guidelines and we're gonna apply for forgiveness. So, yay. Yay, hope. we're hopeful. We've been super rule followers as, as you might expect from a group of women, right? Um, right. And we, we, very good chance. Well, we, we have other applications that are out there too, like a second tranche of the EIDL. Now the EIDL is at two and three quarters percent. So it's still cheaper than any other financing we might be able to get. And banks, they don't really like to lend to nonprofits. It, you know, you don't go into the favored pool, um, unless you have a lot of assets. So, um, that's, you know, that's something that we're looking at. And then another thing we're looking at is what they call employee retention tax credits, and we might qualify. So our tax consultant is going to look into applying for that, and that might help if we're, if we're granted. But hopefully we're, we're going to be um, in good shape because we have a ton of weddings scheduled. Yeah, so Fran just put a question into the chat about that loss that we had. Okay, so that was for 11 months and it was done so that I could compare side by side what it looked like. So the losses really, in my opinion, um, you know, without doing a really deep dive into the whole year and the 990s and all that, we had a full-time facilities manager and a full-time public relations executive that we had coming into prior to the pandemic fully staffed thinking we were gonna go whole hog and you know get a whole bunch of corporate event contracts and different things. And then the pandemic hit. So it, it really took us for a loop. And like I said, we took it almost like a week at a time to see is this, is this pandemic thing real? You know, what's happening? Um, do we need to close? Yes, we do need to close. Well, are we gonna lay off? You know, we went from do we lay off everyone and board up the building and give all the money back to who is essential? How can we bare bones this thing? And, and at first we didn't reduce everybody's salary. So it, we took it incrementally taking, you know, using good judgment, watching that COVID dashboard every day that the county was putting out and looking at what the best guidance was for us because, you know, we're a hospitality facilities. So we have to really, really be careful. So that's why you saw that loss. Had we not cut all of our costs, our loss would have been greater, of course. So we had to also give refunds to some organizations and people that we could not reschedule them. But it was, it was really, you know, pull here, play here to try to get people to reschedule further and further out and, and to have them just not, you know, sue us to get their money back. So um, you, we, we tried to be the best citizens that we could possibly be for organizations that found themselves in the same situation we were. You know, what's going on? Um, what yeah. can we do? I think that was a testament to our, our event staff, Anessa and Jenny. Um, held the hands of a lot of brides and got them to reschedule their weddings for 
2021 and 2022. So that was really good. And then of course we were very aggressive in letting the appropriate film contacts know that we were available for filming. And I'm really excited about seeing the movie that stars um, oh, Nicole Kidman and Javier Bardem on the Lucy um, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz story. That was filmed at the Ebel. And that, um, I think we might have reported that to you in the E Magazine, but that was a $300,000 filming fee that helped us get through a couple of months. And they used the eBell like a studio, actually. They put all of their equipment on the first floor and then they built sets on the second uh, floor. It, we've got some amazing photographs that staff took at the time and we got a, a couple of tours. And after they were, when they were getting ready to strike, um, Christy McAvoy and um, Caroline and I and Philip and Anessa went through and said what we wanted to keep and change and you know what, we wanted them to remove and and so that that was really a very useful thing so that number that madeline mentioned filming that really helped us as well so we are deeply grateful for the asset that we have and the stewardship that we've taken over the years with our relationships with the brides as well as the filming community so those were the things that got us through as well as your support and your generosity um so we're it feels really good. And I haven't said much about our new executive director. Um, we are super excited about it. You'll get a lot more detail coming mid-July. We're keeping it kind of just to the family for now because in deference to the organization where she's currently working. Um, but it's a great fit for us, a person with um, incredible nonprofit experience experience with historic buildings, experience with staff and live events and theater. It's, it's amazingly, we were, we started this search and my great debt to Lori Schechter, who served as the chair of our search committee, as well as a number of members. I think there were 12 or 15 of us on that committee and it was enormously useful and it was a great effort. And we are super excited for you to meet her and for her to get started and lead us to this next great chapter. Um, in our history. So I don't want to give it short shrift because it's going to be really great, but I can't say too much either. So, <laughs> um, Patty, there's a question from Nan Williams to explain about the wedding musical video that was filmed all over the building. Wedding music, is that the um, promo reel? Is that what you're thinking of, Nan? Maybe you have to unmute and yell out your question to us. <laughs> I think it was Match.com yeah. that filmed here. Oh, you know, I didn't see that. I yeah, did not it's see really that. great. A, a friend of mine sent it to me. Uh, she just stumbled across it and has been to events at the eBell with me, although not yet a member, but I'm working on her. Um, oh, good. <laughs> but uh, I was just delighted to see it, and it's really well done, and it should have uh, precipitated some wedding uh, schedules. I hope so. And maybe you can find it on YouTube. I'm not exactly sure. I think that's where she found it. Donna, do you know? I, I've seen it as a commercial on uh, TV. Oh, my really? gosh. Oh, oh that's great. Yeah, Match.com. And there's a choir, and they use the lounge. Uh -huh. and I think the theater also is a big yes. uh, shoot. Oh, that's great. Well, you know what, that'll be added to our, you know, kind of sizzle reel of all the great yes. things that have happened, yeah. you know, at the club. We've been um, subject, we've, we've been in a lot of movies lately. Yeah, I know. You know. One of the things that uh, Meredith didn't say that I said on there was thank you to you for such a wonderful presidency. I'd like to uh, nominate you for lifetime. Could we do that? <laughs> no, 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 no. We we have a succession plan. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm against it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's it's going to be great. We're very excited. Um, I think I think it's going to be. Um, it's a really exciting time. I have to say, it's been a tough year, but um, we're we've we've weathered it. Um, some of you have noticed an earthquake. I'm not sure. Uh, where it's I didn't want to say it, Patty, but I did feel the jolt. I felt. I don't it. know where it was centered. I don't I know either, but you know what? 
I didn't feel anything and I'm close to the e-bill. So thank God, right? We don't want anything to happen to our building. <laughs> we don't. Okay. Um, so there's 2.8 in Redondo Beach, according to Amy. You guys are amazing. Yeah. Okay. There's another question about writing off ticket purchases for, okay. So Fran, I guess you mean these were tickets you purchased at some other venue besides the e-bill. What do you do about event tickets for events that were eventually canceled. Can you write those off as charitable deductions? Um, I don't give tax advice, but um, I did purchase some and I just let them go. I didn't ask for my money back. Um, and as far as deducting, good luck with that. You know, California is not treated as well as California used to be treated when it comes to deducting things, so. Um, Fortunately, yeah, we didn't have that with any of our um, contracts. We just had a handful of contracts where we had to refund deposits on weddings. Yeah, because, um, you know, we don't produce our own events. The events that are held in our theater are produced by outside companies. Not so yet. How, <laughs> well, that's true. So, but how they handled refunds would have been up to them. Yeah, so... This is great. Well, is there any any other thoughts or questions? We're super excited to have everyone here and thank you for doing this. It fulfills our fiduciary obligation as well as our chance to get together. I think, do we have a confab following this? So we can all hang out and I, I, hopefully no one is in any trouble uh, with the earthquake. It looks like a lot of you felt it, Laurel Canyon, Playa del Rey, Redondo Beach. Wow. I'm in West Hollywood and I didn't feel it, so. Okay, it's interesting the way earthquakes go. Oh my and God. I feel them all because I went through the big one and was buried in it, so. Are you really? Oh, yeah. That, that should be a member spotlight, Phyllis. <laughs> wow. Aren't you, aren't you lucky I survived? Yes, we <laughs> are. One of the, we're still gonna do a book, right, Nan? Yeah, sure we are. <laughs> yes well now that phyllis and, and lizzie are working on all these materials that will be great so who is, who is talking i didn't know oh no, that was nan Maybe. williams oh okay yeah i'm just switching my view to the grid so i can see all of you um anyway this was great i can call the official meeting to order unless there's any other business or to close i can officially adjourn and then we can go into our confab. All the it, questions were answered in the chat. Isn't so that good. nice? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, great. Well, if you can stay for um, a little chatting, that would be great. But at the very least, I'm counting on seeing some of you. We're gonna have a gathering with the old board and the new board tomorrow. Um, and then I'll see the rest of you um, on August 8th at the barbecue, right? Um, what time is the event tomorrow, please? Oh, you would ask that. I'm guessing it's lunch, so I'm going to say noon. <laughs> noon? It's 1230. 1230. 1230, Carlene says. So this, is, this is your job, Elizabeth, now. You're going to have to figure everything out. Anticipate. Outdoors or indoors? Outdoors? So today we were indoors. Um, the staff did a wonderful job. They had the art salon um, open and it was beautiful. You felt like you were outdoors, but with um, none of the uh, bugs or heat or anything like that. So <laughs> great. All right. So Meredith, what do we do now? Um, you know, we haven't had, a, I'm gonna pass it over to Phyllis. I, I don't, I gotta find her. I'm here. Oh, there you are. Um, <laughs> and Phyllis, you can take it away and or organize it any way you like. <laughs> well, actually, I don't know if I'm not going to be able to stay very long. I have a, another obligation. Um, so we I can just break into breakout rooms if you'd like. We still have 35 of you here. That's kind of a lot to have a single conversation. Um, do you have a few minutes before you go to tell us about the field trip or are you headed oh. off right now? Um, I can take a few minutes. Yeah, we, 
We had our first field trip on Friday and Amy Sinclair, thank you, if you're still here, um, helped us organize it. And we had, um, went really smoothly, no hitches, everybody carpooled and those, all the carpools worked and um, Oh, I think we lost you there. No, that. no, I just had oh, okay. <laughs> to kill my phone. I had to kill my phone. Um, ah. So we had um, a, a big surprise with um, a couple of big surprises. First of all, like the how this whole thing came about was kind of wonderful because um, our speaker on Millard Sheets, um, when she spoke about um, the multiverse of Millard Sheets, Mark, um, uh, the, Hilbert. Hilbert, okay, I have a mental block against his last name. Mark Hilbert somehow found us through Google apparently and, hooked, and joined us on the program. And then he sent an invitation to all of us to come to his museum in Orange County following that so we took him up on his offer and he offered a private tour um, as he acted as donut docent he own he's the founder of the museum which is now part of chapman university and he showed all of his uh, many of the paintings in this internationally renowned exhibition uh, belong to him and he has this massive collection of art on his own, but the specific exhibition was about the Los Angeles area scene paintings. And scene paintings are defined as paintings that um, actually have people in them for the most part and show most of them urban scenes, though some were not quite urban. But it was just beautiful and everybody was just over the moon over the collection and the tour. Um, which he gave us all of his personal stories along with it. We had a great lunch at Ruby's and everybody was just so excited to be together. And we had our own little private area in, at Ruby's restaurant, which is directly across the street. And then Millard Sheet's daughter found the tour when we put the tour up on our website. She has a Google program. So anytime Millard Sheets is uh, talked about uh, online or on the web, a new posting goes up she gets that and she was not aware of this collection at the museum even though she is very well acquainted with Miller Cheats and has shown some of uh, Cheats's work there before so she came up from San Diego and joined us with her husband Tom and joined us for lunch and the tour so she then informed us on gave us other insight and so we had just a grand old time and we swarmed the gift shop. And I think a lot of us like made many, um, and, oh, and then the sheets gave us a donation of $50 to our club. And I went into the, to the show after everybody left just because it was so chaotic and I didn't really get to just absorb and enjoy <laughs> it as much as I wanted. So I went back for another pass through and then I got to talk to the women who were working at the museum. There were three of them and got to have, you know, a little personal conversation with them. And they just were raving about all of us. They just thought that our enthusiasm was just remarkable and they were just so delighted. So I think we're gonna have to have, like when they open another exhibition, we're gonna have to put another field trip together down there because it was just so exciting. And they're gonna expand it. Yeah. Oh, yes. They're, yeah, they're going into construction uh, next year to enlarge the museum. And they're going to put the home savings, uh, the mural, the mosaic mural from the original home savings bank in, in that was in Santa Monica will now reside at that um, facility at the museum when it's all complete. Yeah. So it, it was, was definitely really like uh, out of a on a scale of one to 10, it was a 10 plus. Yeah, and it, they had a special exhibit of the cells from the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Oh, that's right. They had <laughs> that was just a hoot because the, um, they made a point that 
when the Disney company, you know, being based here, hired all of these wonderful artists that these were, a lot of these pieces were done by people who had worked for Disney who were doing art on the side. They made a lot of money working for Disney, but they also did other art. So these were local, local artists. So it was wonderful. I enjoyed it. I would go back. And you also get a, um, a deja vu of the area because downtown Orange is very unique and quaint and it's been featured on the Huell Hauser shows. So when I went down there, I was like, I think I've been here before. There's an old trade station that's now a Metrolink station. And the Hauser collection is at Chapman College. Yeah, by I was going to say, Huell Hauser's collection, they actually have a, a, his office, a his furniture set up in the little uh, museum in the bottom. Mm -hmm. The library all of, all of his collections are there too that's fabulous it's a very quaint little town but it's a college town so there were wonderful just oodles of small little restaurants and lots of antique malls so a lot some of our uh, participants like left the group and went on to do some antiquing after the event too mm -hmm. so, so. Thanks, Phyllis. That's so great. I'm sorry I couldn't go. It was kind of a little bit too much time commitment, but I love that you guys scoped it out and it's a place that, you know, we could go on our own and learn about as well. So I'm trying to get Phyllis to write a story for us in the buzz about it too. So <laughs> well, great. Miller, Miller Cheat's birthday is tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> he would be 114, but his work is just as popular today as it was during his day. It's exciting yeah. and amazing. And I was telling Phyllis that most of us know his work on the home savings buildings and the Scottish Rite Temple, but we don't realize that he was this amazing painter as well. And then he had this huge body of work. So that was that was kind of cool, especially since you can, you can sort of see he worked in many different medium. So, But he was one of the most famous watercolorists like yeah. ever in the United States. He just was, uh, that was, that was his medium. Oh, did you settle on whether or not it's Millard or Millard? It's Millard. Millard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Now we're saying it right. Yeah. yeah. He, he ran the art, the Chouinard Art School too. Oh, right, right, right. Exactly. He was, he was asked to, when he was a student there, he was asked to teach. <laughs> At a young age. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. It's amazing. Well, great. Well, you you can head off, Phyllis, if you need to. I just thought Thank everybody you. would be curious to hear that. Um, so I see Kay Lachter is with us. Oh. How are you doing, Kay? We were so sad to hear about Joe. <laughs> she's she's so muted. Oh, we can can we, yeah. Can we get you to unmute and then we can... Uh, Muted. There. there you go. There, there you are. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Well, we have we have lots of work for you when you're ready to come back. <laughs> <laughs> I've already been back to the archives, and I will be there again Friday. So. Oh, nice. Starting oh, up again. You. Well, just sort of trying to. Uh, Judy and I are trying to um, sort ourselves out and make an agenda for ourselves, so we. Uh, approach it in an organized way. Oh, great. All right. Well, that's the way to start is to make a plan, even if you can't actually execute it. You know, you can make a plan and then you can delegate some work out. And I think one of the things I'm most excited about our new executive director is her strong interest in the uh, mission and the vision of the club and our history and her experience. She's also a trustee at a historic property her interest in women's studies and, you know, how um, sort of writing about how things take place, you know, history takes place in a building, in a setting and the context for that. And I think that's something that we, we could very easily do symposium on women's studies and the role of women, you know, in the 19th century. I mean, it could, there, there's a lot of stuff. So I'm, I think you'll find lots of support for the work that you're doing in the archives so that we know our story really well too, so. And by the way, Kay, I'm bringing back the reels, um, all the film reels good. tomorrow. Oh, good. And put oh, them good. In. They've okay. all been digitized. Um, and we've had soundtracks put to them. And 
uh, we've got That's the dedication. The dedications are put on them, and we have them all like on DVDs and a big G drive. So I'm bringing the uh, original reels back and, and put them back in their their place. So they're, they're back they're, home again. Yeah. Yeah, in a, in the refrigerator, right? That's <laughs> 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 these days well maybe we can get um at some point the woman who was the art director on the lucy desi movie um to do a program for us um it was just extraordinary the things that they built and what they did um and the photographs i i just took some photographs but um i think that would be a great program especially Ooh. Will we be getting some of those uh, photographs in the archives? You know, they're just mine, but oh, yeah, okay. you can totally have eventually. Them. Eventually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. In fact, I was thinking that maybe we could do something where you know she could sort of take us through. But like they took the juniors' room, uh, the old juniors' room, which is now the grooms' room and turn that into a studio executive's office with all this great Herman Miller furniture. And then our boardroom was a the writer's room for the show. And then the scholarship room was another studio executive's room. And they had like all this vintage furniture and you know all the props and all the details that you would have seen in an office on a studio in the 1950s. Um, so that, that was really, really cool. And then upstairs in the president's tea room, um, sort of in the back half of the room, they built her dressing room, which is really, really extraordinary. And they had this beautiful cabinetry, they had like a fireplace, obviously not a real fireplace, but you know, everything, everything three quarter scale too, um, which is what they do on sets to make it look you know, everybody looked taller and bigger and beautifully painted. Um, it's just amazing, actually, the amount of work that goes into these things. And then they just like rip it all out. You know, it's like, okay, next. <laughs> oh, and they turned our, our theater, um, the Fine Arts Theater upstairs into um, a recording studio, um, like when she would do, um, I guess they did radio. She did a lot of radio. Um, and so they had like a little booth and they created that as well. And then the stage, they made it look like, you know, the stage where you'd, they'd film the TV show. Um, so a lot of, lot of amazing detail. Um, and Anessa took a lot of photographs and I took some photos. Um, yeah, it would be, I think it would be a great presentation at some point, but uh, Amy Vukovic knows the woman who was the set designer and I think Amy, um, I was gonna try to do a story about the buzz, but everything was very um, secret. Like they wouldn't, they were even keeping like pop, you might've seen some paparazzi shots where people were like hiding across the street in the bushes mm -hmm. to try to get a picture of Nicole um, Kidman. And um, yeah, it was, it was pretty ridiculous, but yes. <laughs> Are you sure they weren't looking for you? They were definitely, <laughs> well, you know, the day that we, we went on our walk um, with um, Lizzie and, um, let's see, Paul, Paul Linda, we did our um, walk. They were out there and they almost like called security on us. And then they realized who we were because it was like, <laughs> you know, like you can't be here. So, yeah, I have some, I have some pictures um, that I can, that I can just, I'm just going to share really fast on my screen. It'd be a great presentation if we could get both the set and the art director. Oh yeah, let's see. Um, Meredith has to let me screen share. I don't know, Meredith, are you still there? <laughs> I just see your square. Um, oh well, but yeah, it would be really great to get them. And then of course, Nicole Kidman, that would be really, really fun. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't mind that. <laughs> yeah. You can so, share now. Oh, okay. Let me do this really fast, and then I'm gonna let you guys go because you are all you all have stuff to do. Yeah, my wine is waiting. Yeah, I was gonna say not the least. So this was like a little vignette in her. Can you see that? A picture of her and her husband. Um, that was like a little vignette. Um, let's see if I can show you. This was her. I was most oh. fascinated. This was like her dressing room. 
And this here we are looking, this was set dress. This is the back of the theater there. You can see our floor. Yeah. Um, and here's a better picture. Um, but all that decorative woodwork, everything they did. I was just totally taken with this. This was like my, there you can see me taking the picture. <laughs> Yeah, but this really amazing detail. I loved that, the blue um, depression glass, right? Yeah. And then they had this for like an outside patio upstairs. Oh, that's a nice see, shot. All the cables and everything. I forget what I was taking a picture of. Oh, not that. Let's see if I can go back really fast. But yeah, um, well, here you can see this was the other side of the tea room. These are the um, they had these huge cameras and all this equipment in the back. Oh yeah, we liked that. That was Desi Arnaz's little tag. Um, they put this up on the wall, you know, so you at the top of the stairs, so you could, you know, know which direction to go. This Look at was, cigarette butts. <laughs> yeah, cigarette butts. Yeah, everything. So this was the costume room, um, which they turned into like a place where they film makeup for her. Um, this was their CBS. So they covered all of our chairs. Um, they created this space, the hair and wardrobe. Um, this was going up the stairs. They put in that light fixture and the um, background photograph. They had a cigarette machine. <laughs> yeah, this was our boardroom. And you could see this was like the writer's room. They had like stuff on the board little offices. This was the scholarship room. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Little mail, all this stuff. Oh, my family. That's the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end. <laughs> but anyway, th there's a lot of great pictures. Um, and we can, we can definitely think about it as a program. So is that you, Morency? Are you here twice? <laughs> I see Morency in here twice. I'm just so sorry to hear about Mark. I guess maybe all of you heard that her son-in-law passed away. No, I didn't know. I didn't oh, know. yeah. I don't know if Morency can hear oh, me. Oh, Mark Peel, yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, really, really yeah. tragic. Yeah. yeah, did you do that obituary in the... Uh, that was well, beautifully done. There were several that were in the national news media, the Wall yeah. Street. Um, but yours was yeah. really well done. Thank you for that. I appreciate well, it. Well, I have to thank Daphne for helping me write it. She was very kind and we, we wanted to, it was a perfect way for us to kind of localize the story. Yeah, definitely. Um, that was, Pat, Patty, that was very kind. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it was my, my pleasure. Yeah, I'm so sorry. This must be such a challenging time for your grandchildren. It's very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Too and soon, too sudden. Too soon, too sudden. Yeah. Well, so nice of you to be here with us today, though. Lovely to have you. Well, I love the email. <laughs> we love you too, Morency. Yes. And, well, Daphne and all my daughters are going to join the e-bill, so. Yeah, Daphne yeah. told me, Daphne told me she's gonna come back and Carol's gonna come back, so that's great. Cause we, it's gonna be a great time at the e -bell. There's There's a lot of good stuff ahead and we are building on all of the good stuff that was, I mean, like we were really hitting the ground running before the pandemic and then <sighs> everything just came to a sudden halt. So restart. Well, <laughs> The e-bell is a lovely place. And do you know that Car Carlene has been a good friend to the, to our family and to Daphne's kids? Yes, yes. Yeah. It, was, it was Carlene who um, contacted me. And yeah, yeah, she's, a, she's the best, Carlene. Gosh, we're so lucky to have her, right? Yes, yeah, she's yeah. terrific. And she and Karen are not going far because I think they've been um, snagged for the boutique, right, Karen? <laughs> That's the story I hear that we're going to have a great holiday boutique and you guys are organizing it again. So Karen's, Karen's on mute. She's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, listen, it's so great. I don't want to keep you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out and um, we'll see you all soon and um, enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you for everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.